What's good, YouTubers and YouTubettes? This is JB Sports back again with another one. Floyd Mayweather Jr., Money Mayweather, was in the UK doing some appearances, and uh, one of the uh, questionnaires, or the guys that was uh, being the MC of the event, asked him a question. They said, uh, who you think will win between Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury, the trilogy? He said, uh, if I train him, Deontay Wilder will win. That's what he said there at the UK. He said, if I train him, <laughs> Deontay Wilder wins. So he said, the only way, basically what he's saying, Deontay Wilder needs to get up under his uh, tutelage, and uh, he will be able to defeat Tyson Fury. Couldn't do it the first fight. As you know, that was a draw. The second fight was stopped in the seventh round after taking a battery. And uh, Floyd Mayweather says he's got the key to unlock that uh, Tyson Fury trunk. You know, that trunk that's hard to unlock. He said he's got the key to unlock that. So that's what uh, Floyd Mayweather Jr. is saying. Now, I think I think uh, this is a little bit of a shade thrown toward um, Deontay Wilder's team. You know, I think Floyd Mayweather looks at Deontay Wilder and says, man, this guy really ain't boxing. He's not really technical. He's not really uh, – he's doing a lot of things wrong in the ring. But he's able to get away with it because he's able to land that right hand on his opponents and get them up out of there. But if you look at it from a techni technical skill standpoint, it's, it's not it's not it's not technical at all. You know, footwork is not good either. So I think when Mayweather looks at that, he's basically saying, you know, you know, under, under my uh, tutelage, I would be able to teach him proper footwork, check the technical aspect of boxing, how to uh, throw the left jab, how to throw the right hand, how to go into the famous Mayweather shell defense. The Mayweather shoulder roll, and I could teach him to do those type of things and make his defensive skills much improved than what they are now. And then his offensive skills will be better because he'll be able to deliver that right hand at the right time. You know, he'll be able to set that right hand better up under my tutelage. That's basically what Mayweather's saying. He's basically throwing shade at uh, Mark Breland, throwing shade at Jay Diaz, saying those guys either are not teaching Deontay Wilder how to properly box or Deontay Wilder's not listening to the teaching that they're giving him. He's not listening to him because he's he's fell in love with the right hand. The right hand has took him this thus far, and uh, he doesn't believe he had to really do too much boxing, too much setting setting up. He he thinks he has the capability to see the opening and throw the right hand and get his opponent up out of there at any given moment. So he doesn't feel that he needs to get uh he don't need he don't feel he has, he needs the technical uh, aspect of the boxing to uh to dominate the heavyweight division. So that's uh that's interesting comments by Floyd Mayweather. A lot of people uh going crazy on the internet saying, Oh man, you hear the Floyd Mayweather offer to train Deontay Wilder. Yeah, he offered to train him, but I think it was more of a shade toward his uh coaching team. We don't think they're actually uh training Deontay. They're not getting the most out of Deontay Wilder's uh, ability. Deontay Wilder needs to be using his uh his uh athletic skills along with his technical skills. And if he's taught right, he could be uh able to defeat uh Tyson Fury. And that's that's what uh, Mayweather basically saying, man. I, I have a I have a hard time believing that Mayweather's gonna fly to Alabama, you know, and, and live out a hotel for eight weeks, and uh, you know, run the training camp and uh, teach Deontay Wilder what he feels he needs to, in order to defeat uh, Tyson Fury. I don't think Floyd Mayweather Jr. is gonna be doing that. Don't see that. Don't see him doing that at all. Yeah, that's one thing to say that in, in the UK, you over there doing appearances and you're making yourself look like you're throwing things in the best light. Yeah. Yeah, you're doing things in the best light as my phone's getting low. So I got to get in this real quick like. But, um, yeah. So, um, I just think it's a, you know, I just think it's a, in a way it was a shade toward uh, Deontay Wallace's team. That's what I think it was more than anything. A quick thing, quick other thing I want to talk about real quick on this video. It's been a lot of misinformed people, maybe just wilder haters out here saying that, uh, Wilder Fury 2 didn't make any money. They said it had to do, just because Bob M said he thought it was going to do $2 million, Deontay Wilder co-signed that and said he, he was gunning for that for $2 million. And a fight ended up doing anywhere between 800000 to $1.2 million, depending on who you're going to listen to, Michael Carpenter, um, Bob Arum, who's actually seen firsthand the numbers. Anywhere from that number to that number is doing good. Let's just call it right down the middle. Let's just say it did a million. Just, 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 just for, just for all you, so all you math whiz out here saying it lost money because it needed to do at least 
Whoa, you need to do at least uh, $2 million to make money, which is ridiculous. The pay-per-view fight was $80, okay? If you sold 1 million pay-per-views, that means it did $80 million. How much was uh, Deontay Wilder guaranteed for this fight? You don't know? I know you don't know. It was $25 million. How much was Deontay Wilder uh, supposed to get? I mean, well, how much was Tyson Fury supposed to get? $25 million. That's a minimum. Minimum $25 million plus pay-per-view uh, sales. They was getting the back-end pay-per-view money on how, how good the fight did. So you add another 5 to $10 million from that. If it did $80 million and both guys did $25 million, just add five more for the, uh, getting back-end pay-per-view money. That's 30 for Wild, Wild and 30 for Fury. That's $60 million. If the fight generated $80 million, that's just on pay-per-view sales. We're not talking about Live Gate. Live Gate did another $16 million. So you got 80 to uh, 16 that's 96 you done paid Wild and Fury uh, 30 each. That still leaves you with 36 million to pay the undercard. Promoters get their cut, trainers, managers, and so forth and so on. The fight made money, people. The, the, you know, the UK Wilder haters, y'all show y'all just boxing novice every day. You open your mouth every time you uh you you you, you tweet out you know you you tweet out and you text BS like this saying the fight lost money. You, are you crazy? Are you are you, are you, you don't know math? You know, it's just simple math. The fight made money. The fight made money. That's why they're doing it again. That's why they ain't hesitating to uh, do a trilogy. As soon as uh, Wilder exercised his rematch clause, bam. We already got a date, July 18, back at the same place, MGM Grand, Las Vegas, Nevada. Why would they be doing this all quick, fast, in a hurry if the fight lost money? They they quick, they, they finna get that they finna get that fight in in July, four months later. They finna do a trilogy. So the fight made money. So quit... Uh, Showing your ignorance to boxing or to inside, you know, to boxing or to the numbers, not even knowing simple math, and shut up sometime and quit just going off what you what you hear other people say or what you hear Eddie Hearn say because Eddie Hearn is a con artist. I told you that multiple times. The man's a con artist. You can't listen. You can't listen to him talking about the fight was the pay per view did terrible, did poorly. It's this, that, and the third. You can't listen to that. Okay, you feel me? Yeah, okay. It's all good. It's all good. Just had to, they just had to give you a, a a math lesson for you guys that really thought that fight lost mo uh, money. You're crazy if you think that. Leave your comments in the comment section if you think it's a good job for Floyd Mayweather Jr. to tr uh, train Deontay Wilder. You think that's a good idea or you think Deontay Wilder needs to get another trainer? Nassim Richardson is a name that's been thrown around. Uh, you got uh, Freddie Roach. You got uh, Manny Robles. You got a lot of training. Kenny Porter. You got Ronnie Shields. You know, you got a lot of people out there. Buddy McGirt. Well, you think they you think any one of those guys would be a, a good uh, move for Deontay Wilder to bring him into his uh, training camp for the third uh, Fury fight? Whoever he does, it's going to be kind of hard for them to implement a new strategy due to the quick turnaround. The fight's going to be happening in July 18th. That's the tentative date. So it'll be kind of hard for them to implement their game plan. But. You can always get somebody in and, you know, don't try to give them the full, full transformation, but maybe give them half of the transformation to try to change them and you know, make them do some things better. And then next training camp, you put give them the, uh, the rest of it. But just give, you know, you know you're working with a short training camp. Maybe you don't try to do a full overhaul. Maybe you try to just do a half overhaul and try to just give them stuff that just need, that he'll need to, uh, that'll work in this fight so he can be, be able to uh, regain his uh, WBC heavyweight title. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what transpires, man. But this is JB Sports, the man, the myth, the legend. I holla.